In this session, we're going to look at setting up a scoring system and using our collisions to add to a total score. Now, this tutorial has been based upon another one about a FPS controller. I'll put links to that in below, and I'll show you how to create all the objects as well as we go through. But the aim of the tutorial is to set up a scoring system. So we'll actually create a scoring box on the screen that you can see in the top left here, and that moves with us. And then as we move around and collide with the balls, you will see the score is incremented as we go. And each ball is worth 100 points. And you'll also notice as we collide with the balls, they're also removed from the stage and we destroy the game object. So let's get underway and create this project. Now the first thing we want to do is actually place the three spheres onto the screen. So we're going to go up to Game Object, 3D Object, and we're going to just place a sphere on there. Now it's up to you if you want spheres or capsules or whatever you'd like. I'm just going to drag that up so we can see it and move it across. Now, also what I want to do is give it a material. So I've gone into my assets, into my project, into my materials folder. Now I'm going to create a new material. So I'm going to right mouse click, go up to material, and then I'm going to give it a name, just call it um, sphere. I'm going to select sphere and I'm going to give it a color. So I'm just going to go through and just select a bright red. Now I want to apply that to sphere. So I'm just going to select that and you notice the in inspector, the game object's been selected. I'm going to drop that into there. Also while I'm here, I'm going to add a component and I'm going to add a rigid body. So if it's not there, just type up the top RIG and you'll see it come up and we'll add a rigid body. If we want to detect a collision, we need a rigid body to collide with. So our first person can collide with this ball. So that's sphere one, and I'm just gonna um, leave that there at the moment. And I've got my person. The other thing we need is a area on the stage that we can actually create a scoreboard. So to do that, we're gonna go up to game object and create an empty object. And in here, we'll actually give it a name. And we're gonna call this scoreboard. Now that object can be also moved around. So we're just gonna slide that out around to this position here but we'll actually control this a little bit later by code. So let's go create a first script now. Now the very first thing I want to do is actually get our scoreboard to appear. So I'm going to head into my project folder, into my scripts folder. If you haven't made those, right mouse click and go create folder. And this is where my scripts are going to go in here. I've also got some old scripts, but we won't worry about those at the moment. C sharp script. We're going to call this keep score. And then I'm going to open this script up. Now once this script is open, there's some things we want to do about the scoreboard. Let's have it appear on screen to start with. So I'm going to go down and we're going to go into a new function that we're going to void. And on GUI, we're just going to open a brace and close a brace. And what we want to do when we create this GUI is actually create a GUI.box. And then we want to give it a new, it's going to be a rectangle, so a new rect. And then we can give it its position. So we can go, say, 100 by 100. So 100 out of the top left-hand corner, down the x, y. And then we can give it its width. So I'm just going to give it again 100 and 100. And you can see in the little pop-out window here the arguments that go with it. And then we can close this. And we need to put something in the text box at the moment. So I'm just going to put a comma. And I'm just going to put score in there at the moment. And then I'm going to close all the brackets off to make sure they're done correctly. And we should be able to save that. So when we go back into our game, we've got a C sharp script now. And we want to associate that with scoreboard. So I'm going to select scoreboard here. And I'm going to drag that across and drop it over in our inspector window. You notice that we're under scoreboard. So that script's now associated. So let's just run our program now. You can now see that we actually have a score, and we can also see the object there. So let's push escape, and then stop the play. So what we want now is for a number to appear in that scoreboard. So we're going to head back into Mono Developer, back into our editor, and then we need to set ourselves a variable to hold the score. So we're going to go down, we're going to go public, and then we're going to use a, a static, we're going to use an integer because normally scores are whole numbers. So we're just going to call it score. And we're going to start it with by equaling zero. So when the game starts, it is a zero. So rather than having score down here, we can actually now change this 
to the score by going score. And because score is an integer up here, we need to change it by using a method dot to string. Bracket, bracket. And this will convert the integer back to text to display on screen. So at the moment it's set to zero, so we'll just save that, run our game again. And we should just have zero appearing in the text box. You can see the score zero there. Okay, what we'd like to do now is just detect. So as we move forward, when I run into the ball, I, A, I want to be able to hit it and then watch the score, say, go up by 100. And also, when I hit it, I probably want to remove it from the stage. So let's have a look at how we can go about doing that. Now, one of the important things I might have mentioned before that if we are going to have an object we want to collide with, we need a rigid body on that. So remember, just to add a component, rigid body. Once we've done that, we need to write a script to actually detect the collision. Now to do that, we're gonna create a new script. So we're gonna go right mouse click and go to create a new C Sharp script. And this script's gonna be called Sphere Points. So if our player runs into the sphere, we're then gonna give it points. So let's open up that script. And we need to come in and set up a behavior so we can actually detect it. So we're gonna head down and we're gonna create a void. And in this void, we're gonna be looking for an on collision. Enter. And what we're gonna be looking for is a collision. So we're using a method and then we want to store that collision in a variable. So we're just going to call it collision. So if there is a collision, we want to store the details in collision. And then we want to open a brace and close a brace. Now to get this to work, we want to use an if statement. And we want to say, well, if there is a collision, and then we want to actually have a look at what the collision is. So we want to go collision.transform and have a look at its name. So if there is a collision, which is stored in collision, this variable here, we want to look inside that variable, look at the transform and look at its name. And I want to see if it's equal to our player controller. So our FPS controller. So that's our person that's running around. If there's any other object that you want to see if you collided with, you just put the object name and you can get their names by just clicking on it and you can get it out of the inspector panel here or you can just copy it out of there. And as long as they perfectly match, so that's why I prefer to do a, like a little copy and paste because then I know I can't go wrong. Then we can actually apply something. So if there is a collision, and the collision with this FPS person, so in other words, I've run into that ball, what do I want to do? Well, actually, we need to go back and have a look at the other one, which is keepingscore.cs, because in keepingscore.cs, we actually have this score. So what I want to do from this script, I want to change this public variable here. Now to do that, we're just going to go in and reference the script, so keeping score. And in particular, on that script in there, I want to go to score. And what do I want to do with the score? Well, I'm going to plus equal, which means add to. So whatever the score is, add this to it. So I'm going to just add 100. Now, just before we run it, the other script's called keep score, not keeping score. So just make sure you got the same name. So keep score is the name of the script. See so keep score and the variable is called score. Now save that, head into our game, run our game. Now you notice as I move forward and touch the ball, it's gone to 100. I run into the object again, it's 200. So if you want a player not to keep hitting the ball, we can actually put in another command to destroy the object we run into. Now to do that, we can go back into our script and we can actually go into our game score one. So we can go back in our script, and in this case here, we want to stay in sphere points because this is the sphere itself. And what we want to do is we want to destroy 
and we want to destroy ourselves. So this is game object. So we actually want to remove ourselves from the stage when we get hit. And just to make sure that we know the collision has occurred, we're just going to go debug dot log, and we're just going to go um, hit the ball. That way we know we've actually hit it. So I'm just going to save that and go run the game now. And this will ensure that we only hit the ball once. So as I walk forward and collide with the ball, you notice it's gone to 100 and the ball has disappeared now. Now if you want multiple objects you want to collide with, I'm just going to move sphere down at the moment and let that go. I'm just going to copy that and then paste it and then paste it again. So now I've got three of them so I can actually just move them out. Now all these spheres are sharing the same properties so they still have the same script associated with them they, which means they all are worth the same points. Now if I want one sphere to be worth 200, another sphere to be worth 300, I'll actually have three scripts and associate those individually with each sphere. So let's hit play. And now you can watch each of the spheres disappear and the points increase. So that's 100, 200, and the final one, 300. If you found this tutorial useful, give it a like, subscribe to my channel. Also, have a look around my YouTube channel for other useful Unity tutorials.